we can almost feel the end. Uh, we're just entering the 100 mile wilderness, which means there's gonna be no resupply options, uh, no support at all for the next 100 miles until we get to Katahdin. But I wanna talk about the Shaw's Hostel in uh, Monson. It was wonderful. Poet and Hippie Chick were gracious hosts. Um, and I don't have, I have nothing but good things to say about the experience. Both Braun and I weren't comfortable with the Topo trail runners we had been using. So we both bought brand new Ultra Olympus from the most excellent Poets Gear Emporium. The infamous 100 mile wilderness. There are no places to obtain supplies or get help until a ball bridge 100 miles north. Do not attempt this section unless you have a minimum of 10 day supplies and are fully equipped. This is the longest wilderness section of the entire AT. And its difficulty should not be underestimated. Braun and I were joined by an experienced hiker we met at Shaw's. We enjoyed his company, and the three of us set off into the 100 mile wilderness together. Braun and I had 2,000 miles behind us, and this new hiker was starting fresh. Our first break was at Little Wilson Falls, a beautiful location and a favorite for section hikers. Before we left Monson, uh, we talked to the representative at the Appalachian Trail Conservancy, and they said the water levels were dangerously high, and they recommended the alternate, which is what we're on now. It's gonna be a little bit further. It may be easier, it's hard to know, but it's definitely safer. So we like the word safer. So that's what we're doing. And hopefully it's a good choice. And then there's a parking lot up there. Yes, the there's trailhead. a parking lot. Yes. And there's a, a tra so this is a road still, and this is a blue mark. Being on the alternate route oh, okay. was not necessarily easier. Trail markers were often unclear, and maps had to be regularly consulted. All right, so follow the blue blaze. It's turning into another long day. We had to do an alternate to get around some of the high water. And then we've had some high ridges. Now we're doing some forest walks. All in all, we're not sure how we've hiked today, how far we've hiked today, but it'll probably be a 20 mile day before we get to the shelter. But the news is we've lost Somehow he slipped off the back, uh, and I hope he's okay. He's somewhere behind us, he's slowing down. And in all fairness to him, both Ron and myself have been out here for months, and our legs are pretty tuned. 20 mile days, when the train is moderate, not that big of a deal. I think he's suffering a little bit. Well, we are concerned. But we still have to move forward to get to our campsite. Hope he doesn't get in too late. The good thing is, he's an experienced backpacker, an AT hiker, so we're not too concerned about him. What we are concerned about is his pace and his endurance. We'll have to see how that pans out. Braun and I reached the Cloud Pond lean-to at supper time without our new friend. As the sun set, he was still nowhere to be seen. We were getting worried. Well, we found... We got to our camp at around 6 o'clock. Yeah, uh, that would be Braun and myself. Nowhere to be seen. We know he dropped off at the back of the pack. We didn't know where he was. He was slowing down. So we had supper, set our camp, and at around 7.30, Braun went out with a headlamp to backtrack to find him. He did. They returned back to camp just after dark. Uh, Braun carrying his pack. And we had a little discussion, and with sadness and regret, and his off trail, he hiked back. 
So, too bad, we really enjoyed his company. But uh, right now, I guess the train uh, was a little tougher for his conditioning. So he couldn't, couldn't do it. So, it is now just Braun and myself. We are on schedule to get Katahdin and to get our planes and our cars back home. What you see behind me is the fuselage or the leftovers of a plane crash that year a few years back. Uh, father and son team, they survived, unbelievable. The middle of the winter, maybe that's one of the reasons why the crash was more gentle. Uh, they had winter gear, they were able to get off the mountain and tell the tale. Pretty amazing, pretty amazing. And later in the morning, we cross paths with Just Dave, a strong hiker and a quality guy. We enjoyed his company for a very short period of time only because we couldn't keep up with his pace. Which way do we go? Which way do we go? I think it's this way. There's a cairn. This is some beautiful. The trail passed over some small mountains and challenging ridges. The weather was finally cooperating and allowed for some beautiful views. Toenail from Kingston, Pennsylvania. Hi there, I'm Eminem, and I'm from Manitoba, Canada. I'm Just Dave, and I'm from uh, Chesterfield, Virginia. Hi, I'm Legolas from New Jersey. Have fun, enjoy your trails. The west branch of the Pleasant River was likely the widest ford on the trail, but it was relatively easy, shallow, and the river flow was mild. Yeah, Bron. This is good. Write a trail marker, and Whoa. it says we have 83.9 miles until the peak of Katahdin. I think it's just great. We are we were hiking so long and waiting for this moment so long. Uh, you smell. You can smell Katahdin already. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, I think that's my shoes. <laughs> Following every bit of joy was another obstacle. This time it was the ascent of the White Cap Mountain. Oh yeah, here we are. Top of White Cap. We're in the top of White Cap Mountain. It's the last peak of significance before we get to Katahdin. Now also, the last place to get some cell reception. Touch base with your loved ones before you head deeper into the 100 mile wilderness. No scenery here, no view to speak of, too many clouds. But on a good day, apparently, it'll be your first shot at seeing Katahdin. Not today. We're approaching the east branch of the Pleasant River, and we've heard some horror stories, but it's uh, water level and difficulty crossing. But we've also heard some other stories that the water levels are actually down, which means it may be very easy to pass. Maybe 
we could do some rock hopping and not even get our feet wet. We don't know. But here's the other thing. This may be the last ford we have on the Appalachian Trail going north. So the last chance to get wet feet. Ooh. Sounds good. Sounds good. So we hiked up stream a little bit and there's a place across here where it looks like the stones are going to allow us to go across and we won't get wet feet as long as we don't stumble. I think I'm going to let Ron do it first. <laughs> too easy, too easy. No wet feet, yeah! The day was diverse and challenging for sure. But the last seven miles to Cooper Brook Falls was flat, straight, and level. We blasted it at lightning speed and eventually bagged another 20 mile day. We left the Cooper Brook Falls shelter around six this morning, and we had approximately 2,140 miles behind us on the Appalachian Trail. And we now have about 60 miles ahead of us until Katahdin. So Braun and I are at now Joe Mary Road. It's a logging road, but it's also a place where we're gonna get our food resupply here. Um, the good news is we're here early. The bad news is we're, we're here really early. So we are sitting here, killing time, waiting for our food to arrive for the next three days of the 100 mile. Yes, we're eating probably too much because that's all we can really do while we're here. <laughs> oh yeah, we'll get to watch the trucks go by. Lots of trucks. Logging trucks. I have to apologize. I didn't video the food drop. It came early, which was a nice surprise. It was delivered by Long Shot from Shaw's. Super nice guy. Brought the food a little earlier. And now we're back on trail. And the trail is just wonderful. Our pack is full of good, nutritious, delicious food. And we have three days left. Woohoo! The trail was easy and our packs contained all the food we needed until the end. No more resupplies required. It felt so good. Now we're catching up with those guys. Thought we would. Oh, yeah. We stumbled upon a trail crew team. They were happy and so much appreciated. Jazz hands. Everyone jazz hands. They're here. That's good. My enthusiasm for video was waning. For that, I apologize. By the time we got to camp, we ate, sat by the water for a very short period of time, and then went straight to bed. The forecast was more rain, lots of rain, yet only 40 miles remained. And in the next chapter of the Appalachian Trail Journal, Oh, baby.